Hi everyone, good evening and welcome to another edition of the Black Books show. And shout out to my colleague as well for the amazing job you're doing, you know, promoting Black authors around the world, you know, spotlighting Black authors, giving Black authors from around the world the platform to, you know, share their, share their books, share their ideas and, you know, it's, it's a really great platform. I am Tolu A. Akiemi, the Lion of Newcastle also known as Tolu Toludo, and I'm based in Newcastle upon Tyne. I am a multi-award winning author. I write in the genre of poetry, short stories, children's literature, and essays. So far, I have published 14 books, and I have five books which are forthcoming as well. My first book of poetry was published in 2017, Dead Lions Stone to Raw. In 2018, April, I wrote my first collection of essays on Ravi or Eden James. And in, 20, in 2018, September, Dead Dogs Don't Bark, another poetry collection. In 2019, April, Dead Cats Don't Meow, Don't Waste the Night Life. And in September 2019, Never Play Games with the Devil. In 2020, I published my award winning poetry collection, A Booksiful Love which won the Best Indie Book Awards. And in 2020 as well, my collection of short stories, Inferno of Silence won the short stories category at the India Reader Indi Indi Readers Discovery Awards. And in 2021, January, I, I, I published my collection of poems, Black Does Not Equal Inferior and Never Marry a Writer. In April, 2021, another collection of poems, Everybody Don't Columenta, which addresses themes around on mental health. Yeah, so that's that. I also released two children's books titled, I Wear Self-Confidence Like a Second Skin, and I Am Not a Troublemaker. And both books help, were written to help young children to raise their self-esteem and raise their self-confidence because most times we a lot of you know young children they have issues around self-confidence self-esteem in in schools you know even just around in the home so my aim with those books were actually to help young people to raise their self-confidence to believe in themselves and to believe in whatever they do so after that in september 2021 I released a collection of poems titled Born in Lockdown, which is a which chronicled the COVID pandemic and you know all the turmoil and everything that we humans faced during the pandemic. And in in January 2022, I, I released a collection of poems titled A God in the Human Body. And I have forthcoming books. I have a children's book that will be out in July 2022 titled, If You Have to Be Anything, Be Kind. I also have a collection of poems that will be out in August 2022 titled, City of Lost Memories. And I have a collection of essays that will be out in September 2022 titled, Awaken Your Inner Lion. Then the two other books are forthcoming, one, a collection of poems for young people, titled You Need More Than Dreams. And the final one that will be out in March 2023, The Money Cloud is Empty. Yeah, I'm, I'm also the founder of the Newcastle Review. The Newcastle Review is a literary magazine that publishes stories of writers from around the world. And I'm a co-founder at Lion, co-founder of Lion and Lilac. Lion and Lilac is an art organization based in the UK, which also has a literary magazine that publishes works of underrepresented writers from around the world. Yeah, so that's just all I do. And at the Roman Lion Newcastle, we, are, we have a publishing imprint. And through this publishing imprint, we publish Black authors specifically. And so we are based in Newcastle upon time. We, we tell stories of all, our authors from around the world. And apart from that, for my children's books, I tend, like all my children's books, I've used black characters because mainly we have, like in the UK as an example, about, I think about 5% or 5 to 10% of children's books in the UK actually have black characters in them, which is quite low based on the diversity in the UK. 
So I will encourage like black authors here yeah, who have interest in like writing children's books, children's stories, that we need more books with black characters. We need to like showcase our children. Also, they need to see people like them in these books. And so that is, that will be my encouragement to authors or the authors, that will be my encouragement to authors on the platform this evening as well. So basically, I will talk basically this evening on the topic, telling our collective stories. And yeah, so by telling our collective stories, I know as we all are here this evening, we all always have like stories to share, either based on our own experiences. And, and I think it's quite pertinent that we share the stories because I think at a point in my author career, I always, I was writing and publishing, I say, you know, tomorrow will be like my last day. And I had that, I had that, I had that, I had that kind of mindset that I had to tell my stories. I had to share, share the stories that the world needs to hear the story. So I think as writers, as authors, as aspiring writers, it's quite important that we share our stories for people to, you know, to find inspiration through these stories, for people to read our stories and find encouragement. And for people who also are looking to become writers, to become authors, to see that it's, it's possible. Like I always tell people that if Tolu Akiyemi can do it, then there's no, nothing stopping you. You also can do it in your own niche. You can do it better. You can, you know, you can overcome any form of challenge or obstacles. So, and I personally, I see writing as a gateway, you know, to like enter homes, enter into art, into the art of the people. Writing is a gateway to like communicate your ideas, communicate your own thought process to people that you you, you might you, people people of different, you know, color, race, you know, nationalities. So I, I see I see writing as that form. And basically as a writer, I tend to write mainly about the human experience. So I think it's quite important for, for us as writers to, you know, to find what works for us and you know, find our voice and you know, share those messages, share those experiences, because through those writings, through you know, through those writings, a lot of people draw inspiration. I've had people that read my books and, you know, people will say, oh, they cried reading the books. People, you know, different emotions. And the fact is that when you when we write these books, they communicate to people like in different ways. So the fact that you as a, as a writer, let people experience it in whichever way, let them own these works in whichever way, even though as a writer, at times people interpret my works in like different ways, but I'm happy with that because it can be the fact that you write a book today can be someone it can be someone else's truth, and people can choose to like resonate with it in whatever way they want to resonate with it. Also, I think uh, in telling our collective stories, uh, we need to be authentic as well in terms of sharing our stories. These stories must come from the art. It must come from the soul. It must come from. It must come from within. You know. And so when, when, it, when it's authentic, then also we would always try to like make these stories original. When I say, I always say something like originality is very important. A lot of people say, oh, but in the writing space or within the writing community, there is no new, I, I hear that from time to time, there are no new ideas, you know, people just like recycle, you know, recycle, things and all of that, but I feel like as writers, there's still a way that you can come across as authentic, you can come across as original. And that is, as a writer, I know a lot of people when in, in starting out, they don't really have that voice. In starting out, they try to aspire to be like someone else, but I think it's quite important to find your voice, to stick to that voice, and because that is what would like differentiate you in the long run. So if you are picking a book written by Tula Kiemi, you already know that this is how Tula Kiemi writes. This is what Tula Kiemi stands for. And you know, if you are able to tell the ethos behind his writing, you know, because for me as a writer, I always like to, I like, I like to write on things. I like to share a message. I, I like 
books that would like impact people. Either it could be it could be you know books that people would read and draw. You know, take a lesson away from. So that so let people know you for something like something that will be that will be worthwhile. So it's not just all about oh I'm in this writing thing to like make money or I'm in this writing thing just for personal interest for writing sharing these messages that would impact lives and it could just be as small as you know you might feel like oh it does it doesn't it doesn't matter a great deal but for someone who who is reading what you've written it might matter a whole lot to them. So I think it's quite important that we share we share these stories. And I also think that as writers as well, it's quite important that we share, like in, in my essays, in my essays, when writing my essays, I always like to share my personal experiences. I think it's quite important that in, in, in telling your stories, it's quite important that we share our personal experiences as well. So you're not just telling these stories for the sake of telling stories, or you're not talking about writing stories and, uh, and quoting uh, Jeff Bezos or quoting Bill Gates. What stories can you tell? What stories can you tell from? Let people know about your struggles. What struggles do you have? I like these struggles. Let them know that uh, as, as writers, you know, they can also draw inspiration from you because if you, if you look at it in the, in, the, in, the, in the bigger picture, we as writers as well, we are like inspirational figures. We are, we are people that people read our works from around the world. So there should be one or two things from our lives that, you know, in our journey, there could have been days of like struggles that we feel like our readers can take, can draw one or two lessons from. So I think in, in sharing these stories, why, rather than, you know, looking for figures, looking for public figures that, these stories people cannot really connect with them why not draw like why not let people connect with with you as the author as well share share your own personal story so people can like draw inspiration from your journey from your life let them know about this these struggles and how you know your your own journey as well so i think it's quite important as writers that we must continue to like share our stories and no matter you know, no matter the frustrations and the process and the journey, always reach out to people who have who have gone before, like who have who have gone on this journey before you for guidance, for advice. And you know, I remember something as little as when I started out and I wanted to get an ISBN and the 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 editors that were helping me at the time for, for my first book. They offered to give me their ISBN, and I didn't know at that time that if I had collected that ISBN from them, they would have been my book's publisher. So little things like that, you know, for new people who are coming into the journey, it's always quite important to like seek guidance from those who have done, who have walked this path before, before us. And that's the place of mentoring. That's the benefit of having like mentors and people who have walked this path, having platforms like the Black Books where being aware, you know, ideas where you meet other authors, we're able to like network with other authors and see what other people are doing within this space. So I think it's quite important in like, let's share our stories, let's, you know, communicate our ideas to the world because that is the only, only thing we can do. And in also telling these collective stories, apart from the normal like online platforms to sell the books, your website, uh, like having a, a, a face to the author, having all of that, I think it's quite important as well to also find ways to like, sell your books offline as well. So beyond Amazon, the Barnes and Nobles of this world, your, pub your, your, your publisher's website, your own personal website, shop and all of that, I think it's quite important to like, Get into get into the city and the markets around you that you can you, know, you can get into to sell your books and, and so I think that is something we we authors we need to look into not just like expect everything to come to, to us but there are times we need to like I personally I go to a local market in, in in the northeast of England and you know I get to meet people sign books for them so every every week. People from you know even tourists they come they buy the books they go <laughs> just all around the world and you know it gives like way fulfillment and it's not just it's not just even for 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 the money but every week I know that I'm selling books I'm selling books and you know the books are moving and so 
before you become that big, before you before become that big fish, you know, within the literary space as well, you need to invest, you need to like hustle, you need to, you need to invest and you know, invest in yourself basically, even just from being at, at those markets, I've had like invitations to literary festivals and all of that as well. And so there are a lot of opportunities whereby we can be able to like network, you know, make new connections. And that is, that should always be the goal, like networking, making new connections and investing in the author journey. And, and at the end of the day, I think it's quite important to tell these stories because as we all know, life is fleeting. And for me as an author, I always just want to, I, I'm not always comfortable like having like unpublished manuscripts lying around. So I always like to like just write, just write and get my work out there, just publish, publish these works. So I encourage everyone in the in the building, the black books show, or, or everyone yet this evening that share your stories, keep writing, and you know. The world is our oyster. I will end since today's Mother's Day. I will read a poem from a, one of my collection of poems titled A God in a Human Body to celebrate Mother's Day. And this poem is titled Shiro. For all our Shiro's, we will never forget. Goosebumps of mother's love sent me into the high heavens. This was more than threadbare. Paint, mo paint mother on the canvas, say Shiro. This love suffocates more than Cupid's arrows. I feel the weight sinking into my bone marrow. Goosebumps of mother's love drives me into ecstasy. This sends me into overdrive. Mother's love leaves me in awe. Just call her Shiro. Her voice echoes refreshes my soul like a spring meadow. Sweet mother, Shiro, never forget. Thank you very much. Thank you, Makunen, and thank everyone. Oh, my, you can, I'm on Instagram at Tolu Toludo, and I'm on Twitter at Tolu Akiemi. My website is tolutoludo.com, and also for my, other platforms, the newcastlereview.org, lionandlilac.org as well, and the ruralionnewcastle.com. Thank you very much, and it's been a pleasure to be on the Black Books show today. I remain Tolu Akiemi, the lion of Newcastle. Wrong! <laughs>